Thank you and good morning, everyone. I um, hope you've had a great conference so far. It's great to be here with you and to have the opportunity today to present some of the outcomes of our stack project on the recognition of micro credentials. I'm going to quickly check the time so that I can stick to the 12 minutes. <laughs> My name is Evelyn Willems. I work for NAFIC, which is the Dutch Enic NARIC National Information Center on Academic Recognition. I am filling in today for my colleague Merel Eimers, who really deserves all the credits um, for the efforts on this project. And presenting with me today is Gabby Withaus from La Lancaster University, who has been uh, a super valuable expert on the steering group of our stack project. So, what we have prepared today, I will firstly briefly revisit the whys of providing and recognizing micro-credentials before introducing the stack project itself and its results on how to recognize small learning experiences. And then we will conclude with um, a brief reflection on some challenges and mitigations for higher education institutions in this regard. Now, let's have a quick look, very quick, because I think this has been extensively discussed um, in, in the contributions at this conference, at some of the commonly accepted rationales for the provision and also the recognition of micro-credentials. First of all, with um, their smaller and targeted learning experiences, uh, micro-credentials can help overcome skills gaps in um, a rapidly changing labor market they're also often promoted as ways of enabling mobility and lifelong learning. And finally, finally micro-credentials have the potential, as we saw before, to support inclusion and to hopefully improve access to education and training for wider ranges of learners as they can be um, developed and delivered by a great variety of providers and uh, most of all also different learning settings, so formal, non-formal and informal. Now, whether micro-credentials live up to their full potential and what their long-term long impact may be on our understanding of um, the qualification may be still up for debate, but we do believe that they are here to stay and that this trend will continue to grow. And more importantly, micro-credentials of all different shapes and forms have already been hitting the desks of admissions officers and recognition professionals in um, Enoch Narek centers around the world. So there is a very practical need um, for guidelines, methods, and policies to deal with their recognition right now. And this, in a nutshell, was the starting point for our um, EU-funded stack project, which was a collaboration of six Enoch Narek uh, centers of the Netherlands, Malta, Sweden, Ireland, Lithuania, and um, UK Narek and the steering group of experts from EADTU, the European Consortium for Accreditation, and the Art of E-Learning. The aim of our project was twofold. Um, we wanted to reflect on the implications of micro-credentials for the current good practices in recognition, in academic recognition, which resulted in a position paper on the rise and recognition of micro-credentials. And we also wanted to support um, Enoch Narek offices and admissions officers in um, higher education institutions in their evaluation of micro-credentials, be it for admissions to study programs or for um, credits. And to this aim, an online recognition tool was developed, the micro-evaluator. In our position paper, um, a two-track approach for recognizing micro-credentials is proposed. Those micro-credentials that are integrated into the Bologna process can be, um, in principle, can be recognized in line with the Lisbon Recognition Convention. Um, so the main convention for uh, the recognition of credentials in the European higher education area. And for those micro-credentials that fall outside of the Bologna framework, or maybe offered by non-formal providers, could still be recognized by making use of procedures for recognition of prior learning. 
So this means, in essence, that good practices for recognizing micro-credentials will have to go hand in hand with the implementation of strong, flexible, and widely accessible RPL regimes. And the paper proposes, where possible, to use existing legal frameworks for RPL to develop procedures, though, that are fit for purpose for the recognition of micro-credentials. So procedures that are not overly burdensome for the recognition authority or for the learner. Oh. Um, and we're well aware that RPL regimes are, um, they vary and they're not everywhere. These fit for purpose procedures are not uh, in place yet everywhere. So following this two track approach, um, we suggest that re recognition practitioners can make use of a method that was developed in a previous project, the Evaluate project. Um, which was originally um, designed for the recognition of online learning, but that we found can very well be um, transferred to modular learning in general, be it online, blended, or face-to-face, -face. and that um, this method can be replied, uh, applied to the recognition of micro-credentials. It is based on seven criteria, the first five of which will look very familiar um, for admissions officers as they form the basis for the recognition of traditional qualifications, namely the quality of the course, verification of the certificate, the level of the course, learning outcomes, and the workload. The latter two, so the way study results are tested in the mi micro-credential course and the way the identification of a participant is verified are specifically relevant for modular online learning. Now, to facilitate the recognition and assessment process in our practitioner's guide, different levels of robustness are described for each criterion. In, in a sense, in a traffic light model, we unfortunately do not have the time to really get into the details, but just to give you an example, a very robust level of quality might be that the course provider of the micro-credential is accredited, but if this is not the case, you can look at other quality indicators. Maybe the course is eligible for credit transfer towards an accredited institution, or maybe the provider has uh, documented other methods of quality insurance. Now, if all seven ev evaluation criteria have a high level of robustness, the micro-credential can be recognized in line with the Lisbon Recognition Convention, However, in this methodology, we do encourage a flexible approach, and we encourage institutions to really look at the context and the purpose of recognition to see whether and which criteria are most important and on what criteria you may also be able to accept weaker um, levels of robustness. So we also want to spark a discussion on this um, and maybe also for institutions to develop policies in this regard. Now for the stack project, um, we have converted this methodology into an online tool. We'll uh, give you the link to this online application where step by step recognition prof uh, professionals are gui basically guided through the process, criterion for criteria, question by question. So if you're a micro-credential provider, um, you could go online and see what the assessment of your uh, credential, micro-credential would be, and maybe test it out. A live demo would have been nice, but for time purposes, unfortunately, we're not able to do this. And with that, I will wrap up this part and give the floor to Gabby for some final reflections. And so I'm Gabby Whithouse, and um, I was involved in the Stack project on the steering group. Um, and part of my role was to um, to look at how micro-credentials were being discussed in both recognition circles and higher education. And what I found was quite a mismatch between the two discourses. And actually that mismatch has been discussed quite a bit in the conference so far. So I almost feel like this is redundant what I'm going to say. But on the other hand, it also kind of summarizes some of the... Um, debates and discussions that have come up. So I'm going to um, present to you three, I'm calling them risks of micro-credentials that have come up in the literature 
and what I'm calling mitigations, which is um, kind of the vocabulary of the, um, the recognition uh, group. Um, and my personal feeling is that we need more dialogue between these two silos because it feels like the debates are happening in separate silos. So the first risk comes from um, Canadian duo Wheelahan and Moody, who say that um, micro-credentials undermine principles of coherence, sequence, and hierarchy in the disciplines, fragmenting the knowledge base of practice. So this is the fear um, of academics that um, micro-credentials are going to basically sort of self-cannibalize the, the, the university model of whole um, qualifications. Um, the mitigation of that is that if the micro-credentials are actually aligned with Bologna and the EQF through the common micro-credentials framework, that's less likely to happen. Um, and then the recognition of credits using the methods that Evelyn has just talked about should also help. And actually, that's quite important, the first one, because a number of the examples that have been presented at this conference so far of what are called micro-credentials don't actually match the criteria even of the common micro-credentials framework. So that really is a good starting point. The second risk is, um, this is quite a cynical one, the business model for micro-credentials is an architecture of planned obsolescence combined with the perpetual return of workers to commodified e-learning. So it's like manufacturing your washing machine with kind of built-in faults so that you know, your buyers will come back in two or five years' time and buy a new one. Um, and I'm sure there will be commercial providers who will approach it in that way, but higher education won't. Um, and all the EU projects on micro-credentials have made the point that, that higher education institutions should play a leading role in developing and informing the policies and delivery frameworks. Um, and also what I've heard mentioned many times in the last couple of days is the importance of skilled instructional design teams, learning designers who um, enable and support the, the development of micro-credentials. The third one is, um, uh, uh, yeah, this one comes from Robson, who is based at the University of Oxford, and he says, rather than providing inclusive pathways, micro-credentials have the potential to deepen social inequalities and further entrench the already classed, gendered, and racialized nature of work. Now, this is based on what we know about people who do MOOCs, um, and we all know that MOOCs have tended to be um, used by people who already have degrees and are already privileged. So my mitigations there include um, a comment from Rory McGreal, who if <laughs> any difficult questions come up, I'm going to throw them his way. Um, the term competencies, I know, is frightening to some academics, um, but the idea that learners will be assessed on their competencies rather than the time they've spent learning um, makes a lot of sense. And, um, and also the point that just because they're micro-credentials doesn't mean they have to be not inclusive and, and unethical. All the same processes that we go through in designing traditional university curricula should apply here. Um, and then credit pathways are an essential element of providing a holistic approach. Yeah, we'll be tweeting out the links to the, uh, the link to the slides, but you can also email us if you want a personal email with the link to the slides. Um, thank you. Which is uh, your online platform. When people put in, uh, as an officer, if I put in my judgments, mm. is that visible? Is that shared? No. It's, it, you will. I hope people can still hear me. I'm away from the microphone now. Um, uh, I'll just project my voice. Hopefully, you can hear at the back. Um, so you just get a screen that shows you the traffic light for the seven quality indicators, and it will be red for some, orange for others, green for others. 
um, and you use that to inform your own decision. So at the moment, it's just um, it's just for the user. So we're expecting micro-credential providers to use it to assess their own micro-credentials, as well as offices in um, you know recognition offices to do that. Okay. Thank you. Very Thank much. you.